So we met in the 7-5. Um, he had three months more than I did. So back then we worked a nine squad chart. So everybody in the precinct worked with everybody, not the way it is today. Joe was a jokester. My son Jimmy inherited that, you know, without really knowing him. Um, he's just a comedian. Very active cop. Um, if there was a call, well, he was also a um, volunteer fireman. So from the age of, I think, 16, if you were in a car accident, you want him there because he, he loved training. He knew what to do and um, went to every job, back you up. Well, Joe was a detective. He was um, in the squad, robbery intervention program. And then um, his father was in Rescue 2 in the fire department. And Joe, I guess, I don't really know why, but he wanted to go to ESU. And they told him he would lose his shield. And we talked it over. It would be less money. And he said, all right, I'm going to do it. He applied for ESU. I think the commissioner was Kerrig at the time. And Kerrig let him keep his shield, but they made him specialist. I guess a couple of months before he died, uh, he was promoted to second grade. Oh, he was a great dad. We were supposed to have a meeting. He wasn't actually the Cub Scout leader. Um, he was the Eagle Scout. On 9-11, following day, we were supposed to have a meeting. Joe and I were supposed to become the Cub Scout leaders. And I just called everybody, you know, that Joe is one of the missing. We're going to have to postpone the meeting. Boys were in sports. They were in football, t-ball, everything. And after 9-11, it just stopped. They didn't want to do it anymore. I was at home with my kids, put the boys on the bus. Uh, John was three months old. I came home. It was election day that day. I had election duty. Didn't have to be at work till 12 o'clock. The UPS driver said the World Trade Center was just struck uh, by a plane. I was like, oh, Joe's going to have fun today. Meaning he's going to be busy. Um, busy days are the fun days because the days go by quickly. Came inside and I saw that it was a jetliner. There was a ticket tape on the bottom of the TV calling all emergency workers into work, doctors, police, fire, EMS. So I quickly took my three-month-old, brought him to my mom's house, and uh, drove to work. The LIE was shut down. Uh, there was Suffolk and Nassau County had it, uh, checkpoints all along the way. If you weren't an emergency worker, you had to leave. If you were, they would check in IDs. The radio was talking about uh, we're under attack. Um, Queen's Courts were hit, the White House was hit, the Pentagon was hit, the World Trade Center was hit. Obviously, we don't know that's not true, but, you know, no cell phones, no social media back then. So what they said on the news was true to us. So I didn't know what it was driving into. Everybody was just on standby. Just, it was like surreal, like um, cops just waiting. And we were attached to truck seven and Joe used to be in seven, now he was in two, so we're on different radios. So I went next door to ESU to listen to the radios so I could hear ESU. There was an off-duty, um, a retired cop there, and he said 300 rec rescue workers just got killed. And I was like, what? I tried calling Joe, there was no answer. I went into um, my sergeant, I was like, I have to go. I have to go to Manhattan, I have to find my husband. My sergeant said no. Um, but the commanding officer, uh, Chief Secreto, Chief, uh, he gave me his car with another officer and we went into Manhattan. At first, I went to truck two where he worked to see who was there, you know, what they knew. And then um, his radio was found. No, his cell phone was found at the ambulance staging area. So then there was some hope that he was in the hospital. So the PBA um, sent people to hospitals looking for Joe, and obviously they didn't find him. But um, then the um, deputy police commissioner Dunn sent officers from the 75 to look for me because by this time they were notifying the families. They knew who was missing, and they couldn't find me. One of the girls that I worked with found me, and she said, uh, Joe Dunn's looking for you. You have to come to headquarters. Why is Joe Dunn looking for me? And um, I was like, well, is Joe dead? She's like, no, 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 he just wants to talk to you. So I, I, I knew. So it was at downstairs at the uh, auditorium. Um, it was, my in-laws were there already, my parents were there, my uh, brothers were there, all the families were there. There were 
line of duty families there. And when they came in, it was uh, Don and Carrick and all the PBAs were there, the unions. They just uh, told us that they were missing. They wouldn't let me drive. I don't know how I got home. I don't remember. You know, I was, I guess I was in, in a daze. Um, when I came home, I told them that J Dad was missing, and Joey said, no, Dad's, Dad was sleeping with me last night. And my mother-in-law was there with me, and like, we kept them out of school, both Joe and Jim. We tried to keep them away from the news and keep them away from going to school, but they made friends with kids on my parents' block, and the kids told them what was going on, unbeknownst to us. I think it was about a week after they were uh, reported missing that they told us that there was no hope. But they set up beds downstairs um, in the auditorium. They set up TVs. They put us up in hotels. Working in the 7-5, it's busy precinct. I had great friends that I worked with, great partners. and. Sometimes I think people are jealous at the com camaraderie that you get working in the command. Just great friends. They would come over. My friend Joe Nugent would sit on the front porch with my son John as an infant and me and his wife and the other girls we work with and our kids would all play together. They found them around Jimmy's birthday. My in-laws and my parents wanted to be there when I told them that they found Joe and he was deceased, so I thought that it should just be me and the kids, so I sat them down in the living room, three of us. I sat them down in the living room, and um, I told them that their dad has died. Too much time has passed, and uh, we hugged. You had asked my kids if they had any heroes. They had one, but I don't think they remember, because he also died on 9-11. That was uh, Sergeant Mike Curtin. Mike was a gunny sergeant in the Marine Corps, and uh, he was in Desert Storm, and he would give them pieces of their uniform. And if you, my brother was a photographer. Um, after 9-11, my son Jimmy put on that uniform, and he would patrol my, my yard in his uniform with his uh, toy guns. And I didn't want him to remember his birthday as the day that they found my husband, so. And I didn't want to have his funeral on his birthday or, or Halloween. We arranged it that it would, we'd ha have his birthday party and before Halloween, we had the funeral in the middle there. I wanted them to go to college and get a nine to five job, become a lawyer, become a doctor, you know, not a doctor, but you know, a regular job, not as dangerous. So when they said they wanted to be cops and join the military, I was not happy. It's a dangerous job, but it's a rewarding job, and there's jobs within the job, as you know. Joey got called for the NYPD, and he was going to go, but I knew he wanted to be a Marine. And I'm like, Joe, you can still be a Marine. Go to boot camp. Join the reserves. Just put off uh, the NYPD for a few months, and that's what he did. Yeah, you know, I did say to him, uh, you're gonna see things on this job that you can't unsee. It's gonna change you. And if you like the way you are now, you know, don't don't take this job. He said he didn't really understand it until he was a cop, and he's like, you're right, it does change you. Seeing them up there, Joey's was uh, impressive. Um, you know, I had to hold back the tear tears. Jimmy had a COVID graduation. A little bit different. Joe wears my husband's police shield, and Jimmy wears my police shield, which was my father's shield. And whoever makes detective first gets to wear his, their father's detective shield. Well, I try and remember the happy times. I invite his friends over, guys that we used to work with every year. Um, we have a picnic, a barbecue, or cater every 
myself and my kids will come into Manhattan, go down to the um, ceremony. Some years, not all of them come because they have school or other obligations or work, but at least one of my children have come into Manhattan every year on 9-11. And then uh, we either go to my house or one of the cops that we work with house, houses and we just tell war stories, the happy times. Thank you.